exist to bring God glory and make disciples. That's why you're at your job. That's why you have relationships you need to mend, to bring God glory and make disciples. You live in the neighborhood that you live in to bring God praise and credit and to help people draw closer to him to become more like Jesus. I mean, that's why you're here, right? You're not, <laughs> it's, it's not like we're going to get into heaven and be like, you know what, let's just spend 10,000 years singing about your resume. Can we do that? Here's all the jobs you had, right? Here's the ones you don't put on the resume because you don't want them to call those people. That's not what it's about. We're going to be celebrating all the goodness that God's done and everything that he's in and what we were able to witness in others. That's what's going to fill the eternity and the praise. That's where we're going to sit around tables with King David and go, man, here's where I completely blew it. But the only thing that I really got right was to faithfully follow after him. So I may have fallen over like a newborn kid trying to learn how to walk, but still was striving to be faithful. So in all of this, God's telling us, look, not opposing God is an important aspect to why we exist. There's so many stories. I mean, I just got lost in them. And I'm like, well, just show me. We're, you know, in scriptures where people opposed you. He's like, well, let's just start reading the Bible. I made it to like Genesis 3 and things fell apart. Right? Adam and Eve are like, mm, apple, yes. And things fell apart. He's like, think about the devil, fallen angels, all that they went through, all that they chose. Look at all the folks, King Saul, David. And then you know what really hit home? He's like, let's just take a look at your life. So he started rolling me through the 80s, and he started rolling me through the 1990s, early 2000s. And I was like, oh, man, all my regrets at their core are littered and at its nucleus when I went against what you wanted for me. I mean, every time, every time. And I thought, hmm. That teaches. I mean, that helps me. So I look back at my old self and don't be like that guy, Nathan. Don't be like how you were. Learn from that. And learn from all the others through church history. To take that example to not oppose God. So I want to talk about this because based on this message, what can we do to be like Jesus? The only man to ever walk the planet to never oppose God was the fully God, fully man, Jesus Christ. He's the one that ever did it right. right? He gets baptized Voice from heaven, dove comes down. This is my son, which I'm well pleased, which shows up at other times as well. He was always in perfect unity with the Father. So that's my example. That's my goal to reach and to strive after as a, as a dad and as a husband, as a neighbor, as a Christian, as a pastor, to, to be that all the time and help other people to do that as well. So let's talk about our gospel centered worship. Remember, none of this is possible. You're not, you live in opposition to God if you're not born again you're not a Christian if you're not saved. But when it comes to your worship, ask God to help you remove any opposition in you towards him. Any opposition. And you're going to have to ask, because sometimes they're, they're blind spots. Sometimes they're things you need to grow into. And if you want to start in a place that's going to help you, just dartboard any of the Psalms. And it will begin to cleanse your soul, your heart, and your mind. Because you'll see David and the sons of, uh, and, and Asaph, and even Moses has got a psalm in there. So you'll see those guys wrestling and going, here's where I went against God, and this is my way forward. You can read almost any story about Peter in the gospel and just be like, oh, here's the, here's the way back, right? Create in me a new heart, O oh Lord. Renew a right spirit in me. Because I do not want to be opposed to the one that keeps the water from rushing over the ocean by his will. The one who has named every star, who knows every hair on my head, who is the Alpha and the Omega, who made me when he could have made someone else. I'm going to take an easy 10K year and just thank him for that. Because he did. And not only that, but he saved our souls, Christians. He saved us so that we could be with him forever. I mean, I don't, you just never get over that. So I would encourage you in your worship, just give with what there's no one more loving and just and true to sit with than God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit and go, hey, look, if there's something in me that is against you, get rid of that. Help me to be free from that. And he'll show you the way. Uh, when you're out in a community with others, it's huge, it's important, right? 
um, because we don't want to be in opposition to God. Believe, think, and act in accordance with his sovereign will. But Nathan, how do I know his sovereign will? Right? We've got prayer. We've got Bible study. We've got other mature Christians who are living around you and near you. But don't think, don't believe, and don't act against what the Bible says is right and true in any way. In fact, it moves us to the next part of service, like how can you serve others? Invite others through explanation and action to gladly submit to God. It's really, that's sort of a nice way of saying what King Darius said in uh, Ezra 6, 11 through 13. I mean, he's doing this. This is how he did it. You change this, you're dead, right? Boy, that preached different. That's how you grow a church. You guys don't do this this week. You're all dead, right? But it's true. Eventually, it's going to cost us. You may believe the mirage and the lies of this sinful world and think, God and I are just good. I don't need to be saved. I don't need Jesus. But man, when you die and wake up in eternity, you'll realize it's way too late. And you know what stinks about that? Is that there are other relationships that we have, aunts, uncles, and cousins, and neighbors, and high school classmates, and all that, that that applies to. And they're just going through life just thinking it's, it's all right to be in opposition to God. But we know the truth. We know Christ who could set them free. So we explain and help them to know and understand. Why is this good thing happening? We talked about it earlier. James 1.17, because God made it so. Why are things like this something that we, we struggle with and it's going through? You've got to be in a right relationship with what God is. So we teach and explain and help others gladly submit to God. To be able to say the reason that I do what I do when I do it is because I'm striving to be like Christ and help them understand it. That's why I talk to my wife the way that I do, why I treat my kids the way that I treat, why I engage with my neighbors the way that I do, why I talk to complete strangers who don't want to talk to me the way that I do, so that they might know Christ. And then we come to the part of multiplication, which we pull out of this, right? Like, how do we multiply this truth into others, which is what God absolutely wants us to do. Because you can't make disciples without first taking someone who's saved and sharing with them um, the truth of God's word. So we only affirm, we only support, and we only stand with what God's will is and found in the Bible. The actual capital T truth, right? That's not like somehow. But the actual T truth of God's holy word. That's what you affirm. That's what you support. I mean, everything is tossed up like a salad into the air. I'm going, oh, this is right, this is good, and this is true. And we start with teaching what is in the Bible, and upholding that. Because when we don't, they start changing things. When we don't, it seems as though sin is going to take the ground. Though the gates of hell will never prevail against the church, it's Christ's promise. But the answer, it's to not stand in opposition to God. And what's really, really, really encouraging about all of this, which we read in um, several of these verses, it's in, in Ezra 6, we see it, we, we can see it in Jude um, chapter 1, we certainly saw it in Acts 5, 39, you will not be able to overthrow God. There is no defeating him, Christian, which means when you stand behind God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, you are on the more than conqueror's side. Is it always going to be easy? No, not this side of eternity. But this is our way through. It, it is a, a farce to try to just tell ourselves that it's always going to be easy and people are always going to support what Christians believe. So that's why we must not oppose God. That's our clarion call, the, the banner in which we hold high to go, all right, what does the Bible say? This is what I do. How would Christ respond? That's what I'm going to think. That's what I'm going to believe. That's what I'm going to engage. So let's look at the one thing one last time. So I'm going to just make sure we remind that. Remember the pepper spray deodorant? Opposing God is always a consequent filled for that idea. We could spend forever in this room with this group talking about that. And go, hey, just share a time. Just share a time when God said do this and you did it. And just go on and on and on. Now, why does he tell us that? So that we can avoid the consequences. You know, there's such thing as needless suffering, right? You know that. That sometimes, that sometimes we suffer, we suffer not at God's will or intent, but because, but because of the consequences of the sin that we brought in. That's why, that's why he sent Christ, Christ to pay a price, price that we could never pay. Could never pay. And that's why he, he teaches, teaches us the way in which we should go, because there are some suffering, not all, that can certainly be avoided. And you guys know that. You've done things, I've done things, that there was no one else to blame but who? The guy in the mirror. He was the only one. 
And as handsome as he is, he's still to blame, right? right? So, I would, so I would encourage you in all, I don't know, I guess in all that I am, to no longer oppose God and help others to not do that as well. You're either for him or against him. Oh, man, I think of Joshua, right? Joshua, right? Hey, man, if you guys want to go back to Egypt and go to the land of Canaan and serve those, fine, do it. But as for me, my house, my three kids, we're going to serve the Lord. This church, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to call Bible things by Bible names and do Bible things in Bible ways. And we'll never not do that. 